yesterday played Karkasa and people call me Saran and I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher and a healer that's what I work with and I'm also sick S-I-K-H sick yeah so so it's a faith it's the world's I think it's the fifth largest religion, actually. But we don't know so much about Sikhs because Sikhs don't missionary, you know, they don't mission, missionize, missionarize. And so we don't proselytize, as it's called. So there's nobody going to go like, become Sikh. It has to be your life practice. It's not like, I'm a great person because I read prayers. So it's really how you see yourself and it's how really how you position yourself in life towards yourself and other people. So it's a practice, it's a practical practice of everyday life to be a Sikh. And Sikh means student, so it's a student of truth basically. You're not a good Sikh or a good Muslim because you do what you're told. Oh, I'm told to read these prayers. It's like, it's only when you connect your consciousness that you're actually present with it that something happens. So it's not what you do, but what consciousness you do it from. And so you always kind of want to do it from an elevated point of consciousness. And that's basically living from the heart center. So the heart center is, is a place of neutrality. And usually people think like, oh, it's just like loving everybody. And it can be, it can be. But really as a, as a spiritual practice and as, as a powerful tool, it's really to coming into neutrality about everything. And again, on God, accepting everything is the same. Yeah, we are. We're absolutely the same. Uh, we recognize that um, I am you and you are me. And in, in Sikhi and also Kundalini Yoga, we use the mantra Ek on God. And Ek is one. Om is the vibration, the vibration of the universe, the creative vibration. And God is the doing, the doer. So Ek on God is, is one universal source, one u- universal vibration. Everybody is one. And, and that also, you know, if you don't see God in all, you don't see God at all. So, so we are all of the same source. We are made of the same stuff. And then we're just, you know, individual sparks of this divine creativity because the universe is ever expanding. So how could there be, you know, there are no replicas. There's just expansion into, you know, the, um, individual soul that it you know expresses itself in an individual way and i think that i believe that that's why we came here we came to have this human experience to to manifest that in a three-dimensional reality and to really live from our souls and we get in trouble when we start making ourselves into something we're not like going to society and saying um i really want to be an artist but my mother wants me to be a doctor and i need to make money to survive so i'm going to be a doctor so your soul not your soul's not going to kind of like it so much i think so it's it's a little bit beyond the level of the everyday self and it just becomes an ecstasy of of realizing the gift of being alive and that's really when you start understanding um, that you don't need to go along with whatever your thoughts are serving you. Um, but how you do that is you can cop into your third eye point, and you, that, this is the link is between the third eye point and the heart. And then when you're in the heart center, you can do a, a powerful practice, for example, called heart breath, which is you breathe deeply through your nose, in and out, but as you exhale, you feel or imagine that the breath comes out through your heart center. And, and so that keeps the awareness again, the awareness, the consciousness in your heart center and really, really changes the energy. And so the different chakras, the different levels of the body have different energies as well. So, so this is the neutral, um, unending, unlimited compassion. Action and reaction and patterns of reaction. So uh, when what you do produces a reaction. 
So you drink alcohol, you get hungover. <laughs> so when you come into dharma, which is a spiritual life, you align yourself with, with values that don't produce reactions in the world. You do your spiritual practice, you clean out your subconscious mind. Um, you, you're not ruled by your programming. So we are all, we come with karmas which are like, oh, my mother taught me this, um, energies from relatives or people, or oh, my teachers told me I'm like that. And so those become part of your identity. We put ourselves together from other people. And then the work is, the spiritual work is to release and go like, uncover the layers, take off the layers so that you can be who you really are. Like, well, who am I? I'm, this is the way I am. But, but really when you start meditating, you understand that you are not the body. You are not the mind. The body is, you know, the body is your home and the mind is your tool. So you start living from that place of a um, more subtle place. Um, and life becomes infinitely more interesting when you do that. But it takes a little bit of commitment to do that because you have to release all these other, you know, attachments of, oh, this is me and I don't take it away from me, oh my God, you know, who will I be if I don't do the things I do? Who will I be if I don't eat the things I eat? Who will I be if I'm not the way other people want me to be that, that they are used to seeing me as? So it's a really restructuring your identity and hooking it up into a, a spiritual identity and saying, you know, I'm infinite, infinite spirit, but I came to have a human experience. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience, not a human being having a spiritual experience. So you acknowledge the source, which is, which is the universal energy. But when it comes to really connecting to myself, my deepest sense of self, then that comes through surrender. So and that's why we bow, we give our hands. In many spiritual traditions, you do uh, a morning practice. So you do sadhana, which is your spiritual practice. And usually you do it in the morning before the sun goes up. So basically we get up between, some people get up at 2.30 a.m., I get up at 3, some people get up at 5. But you want to get up before the sun rises and you do whatever, you know, you might chant some prayers or you might chant some mantras or if you're a yogi you do some yoga and you meditate. And usually these mantras are very expanding, they expand your consciousness. And that's why we chant them because they came from enlightened beings. So we chant them so we kind of vibrate ourselves up to their level by chanting these mantras. So when you chant a mantra, you don't just speak it, but you chant it, you embody it. So you allow that vibration to really um, vibrate in your whole body. 